In this video, we will be looking at the AppD Management Console and I will be explaining some of its features. Okay, so let's open the AppD Management Console again. I'm going to go ahead and just connect. I'm going to go ahead and connect. And if I expand this out, I can give you guys a look at exactly what's in here. Now, first thing I will show you is if I right click on the server and go to system options, this is where you set the default content path. So you point this to wherever you set up your shared content folder. Now be aware that the users who will be using the applications or getting the applications to their clients will require to all have read access to this share. It's also worth noting in my demo, as it's just like for a POC purpose, for a proof of concept, to show you guys, uh, the content share was placed on this actual server on the same server as the app, the management console and streaming server. But if, for example, you decided to put the actual content share onto a network drive, which many companies would, all you have to do is set the server or set the path for the content share pointing to the actual network location. So, let's look at our applications. So we can see this is where each shortcut will appear. After you import your application, if it's got multiple shortcuts, there will be multiple shortcuts that will appear in here. And they will all just share the package. File type associations. Likewise, file type associations for all the applications will appear in the middle pane here. Packages. Packages is very important. This, uh, this represents the SFT files for each of the applications. So if I open this, you can see package file is pointing to the SFT file. This is important also because if you are to do an upgrade, and you want to seamlessly push that upgrade down to your users, you do not delete your application from this console. You leave it as it is, and you simply go to add version here on the right, and you point it to your updated SFT. So you'll have not just one, but you'll have two. The app client on the next launch of the application will check the server for updates, see that there's a newer SFT there, and stream down the difference. Application licenses gives you the option for uh, controlling and setting up uh, license groups for your application. Server groups, uh, we're just using the default server group here at the moment, but you can configure and organize your own server groups. Uh, perhaps you'll have multiple AppD servers for different departments or business units, however you decide to set it up. Provider policies. Uh, again, you may want to organize different uh, policies for refreshing uh, based on the actual uh, group. I uh, can see the group assignment for this was just our uh, domain users which we set during the installation and you can see the authentication level that has been set there and verbose logging has also been enabled. Administrators, this is for assigning administrative rights to using this console uh, so it's set for domain admins. And reports. Reports uh, are using the SQL database backend 
and you can just create new report um, say for the application usage of your application um, say we want to do a report for the only application we actually have here uh, Orca so actually to show you the drop down you can do it on system utilization software audit application utilization and even system errors one other thing to know and you really should do this I would strongly advise it because I found in the last few versions of this management server I've had issues where the server when rebooted would actually stop the service so the service even though it sets automatic does not seem to start up every time you restart the server so it's a good idea to go in here go to your properties and change it to automatic delayed that means after startup the service won't start for a few seconds it just seems like a, a little niggly issue that the service probably conflicts with something and doesn't start right every time 